Hey everyone, welcome to our 2024 way too early season prediction for the Oklahoma Sooners. So we're going to be looking at the 2024 football schedule for the Sooners and seeing what we predict their final record is going to be. So go ahead, hit that like button and subscribe and we'll go ahead and get things started because we had a lot of changes within the SEC this offseason. We have Texas and Oklahoma now moving over to the SEC Texas obviously won the Big 12 last season. They went to the playoffs. They lost to Washington, but they're bringing a lot of heralded players over to the SEC. And then you have Oklahoma. They had a 10-win season last year. They're looking to continue that success in the SEC in a tougher conference with a tougher schedule. Brett Venables definitely has his work cut out for him. They have a really tough schedule. As of right now, they have five to six preseason ranked teams that they're going to have to play with probably three of them in the top 10. So it's not going to be an easy road for Oklahoma, but they did finish last season hot. The biggest news for Brent Venables, they had Dylan Gabriel, who was a Heisman level quarterback. He transferred to Oregon. As of right now, 247 has him listed as the number two quarterback in all of football. They lost him last season. They lost a Heisman type player to the Ducks. But they do have Jackson Arnold stepping in as the starter. He's a five-star. He showed some flashes last year, so can he pick up with that success? They also lost lost Jeff Levy. He's now the head coach of the Mississippi State Bulldogs. That's a massive loss as offensive coordinator, but they are bringing in Seth Luttrell, who is a Mike Leach offensive coordinator, so he should slide right in. They're going to be airing the ball out a lot. The biggest questions for them, can the defense continue to improve? They had a god-awful defense in 2022. It got a lot better last season. Brent Venables has had top 10 recruiting classes, top 10 transfer portal classes. So this roster is definitely talented. Can they continue that success on the field, carrying that over in the 2024 season? And can a running back number one step up? Their biggest issue last year was they didn't have a 1,000-yard rusher. They do have Saul Chuck coming in as the undisputed number one running back right now. He had just under 800 yards last season. Can he build that into a strong 2024 season? But let's go ahead and get things started. Let's look at this schedule, and let's try to see what we think is going to happen for our Sooners. So they kick things off Friday, August 30th, playing the Temple Owls, and this game is in Norman, Oklahoma. This game's not going to be close. Obviously, Temple does in no way have the level of roster to be able to complete with the Oklahoma Sooners, who do you have probably a top 15 roster in all of college football. Like I said, top 10 recruiting classes, top 10 transfer portals. This is just kind of a warm-up game for Jackson Arnold, getting used to Seth Luttrell's offense in a real-world Division One scenario. So they're just going to kind of iron out some kinks, try to get hot, try to get things rolling as they go into SEC play. But Oklahoma's going to win this game. They should win it pretty good. This is also a chance for their D-line to really get warmed up because that's where their strength is, is on the D-line. Oklahoma's probably going to win this one. You know, it'll take them a little while to get warmed up. I'm going to say like a 38 to 14 or 17 type game. The next game that we'll be taking a look at is the Houston Cougars, Saturday, September 7th. So they do have Fritz coming over from Tulane. He's now the head coach for the Cougars. But the Cougars lost. Obviously, they got rid of Dana Holgerson. They did fire him. They lost a lot of players, transferred out. They are bringing back their starting quarterback from last season who had just as many interceptions as he had touchdowns. But he played some really big games well. He played the Texas game really well. I think he had 400 passing yards. He went off that game. But then they would play a nobody school, and he would just completely fall apart. So we don't know what we're getting as of right now. But Fritz is a really good coach. He's going to rebuild this team, but it's going to take time to flip that roster and get the roster back to the 50-50 style of football that he likes to play. This is another warm-up game. Oklahoma is familiar with the Cougars. They did play them every season in the Big 12. So they know how to play the Cougars. They're familiar with them. This game's at home. This is another warm-up game for Oklahoma. I have them moving to 2-0, and winning this game. They should win this game pretty comfortably because, as I was saying, the Cougars are just not going to be built yet to be able to compete with the talent of, of Oklahoma. But don't overlook this game. But they'll probably win it like a 30-20 to type game. And then the next game, Saturday, September 14th, we have the Tulane Greenway. So Fritz's old team, this team's lost a lot of players. We're talking about Pratt, the running back, Fritz, complete turnover. This is a 10-win team from the last two seasons. I think they won 11 games each of the last two seasons. Really competitive team. The, the roster is still pretty decent, but Fritz is gone. So they're going to be going through an overhaul, rebuilding at these skilled positions. Also, Oklahoma should roll through this game. 
This game is also in Norman, Oklahoma. I'll have Oklahoma winning this one. This will probably be like a 32 to 20 type game. A comfortable win, you know, but a little closer. Do not underestimate Tulane. They always play really competitive. But Oklahoma, as of right now, will be 3-0. and Moving into our first big matchup. Welcome to the SEC. Saturday, September 20th, you have the Tennessee Volunteers visiting Norman, Oklahoma. Obviously, Tennessee is not a team that you want to overlook. They've had really strong seasons the last couple of seasons. Two years ago, they beat Alabama. They were a top 10 team the whole season. Took a little bit of a step back last season, but still a top 25 team coming into this season as a top 25 team. They have the number one quarterback from two years ago, five-star. This team is built at the skilled positions. They've always had a good offense, but last year they actually had a pretty decent defense. So they're going to be bringing in a top 30 defense. This is Josh Heupel, the old Oklahoma quarterback. He knows Oklahoma. It's kind of a coming home party for him. Oklahoma fans, don't be mean to the guy just because he is coaching on the other side now. He's a really good coach, though, really good offensive coordinator, also a Mike Leach guy. Tennessee's going to be able to score. Their offense is going to be a lot better than they were last season, and they should have a decent defense. This is easily a game that Oklahoma could lose. I would not be surprised if they are even the underdogs once this game comes around, but both of these teams will be ranked. Both of them will probably be top 15 teams. This is going to be one of the better games that weekend. But I'm going to go with Oklahoma getting the win at home. Both teams are breaking in new quarterbacks. Tennessee's quarterback might have a couple more reps under him. Jackson Arnold, I mean, they are both five stars. So it's the battle of the five stars. Both teams with pretty decent defenses. Both teams are working on their offenses coming into this season. But Oklahoma is at home. So as of right now, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to say that Oklahoma wins this game because they're in Norman, Oklahoma. If they were in Rocky Top, I'd have Tennessee winning just because I kind of think these teams are very similar and they're identical teams. They're both working on the same issues coming into this year. But I'm going to go with Oklahoma winning and moving to 4-0. and The next team that we're going to look at is Saturday, September 28th. That's the Auburn Tigers. This is Hugh Freeze's team. Boy, this team last season, their offense was a complete joke. Completely pathetic. They were scoring 20 points a game. They did have a pretty solid defense, though. Hugh Freeze is working the transfer portal hard, bringing a lot of skilled position players. Thorne last year at quarterback, like I said, was just a complete joke. This team is rebuilding in the SEC. They're going to be better than they were last year. But technically, Oklahoma's still the better roster. Oklahoma's not really rebuilding they're retooling with their pieces. The roster top to bottom is far superior to Auburn's. Do not underestimate Hugh Freeze. I would in no way be surprised if they win this game. This game is in Auburn also. So Auburn does have the edge there. But I'm going to go with Oklahoma getting the win here. I have them moving to 5-0, and beating Auburn. As of right now, they're riding high, kind of just like last season, starting out the season undefeated. Strong start. Moving into the top 10 now in polling. So people are starting to say, SEC, not tough. Oklahoma's laying the foundation there, and they're going to have a strong career going forward. But right now, they're sitting at 5-0, and going into the, well, they have a bye week for October 5th. So they'll be able to retool, kind of lick their wounds, get back to being healthy. And then the big one, the Red River rivalry, continuing in the SEC Saturday, October 12th. They're going to be playing the Texas Longhorns. This game's going to be in Dallas, Texas. This is a big one. Obviously, Oklahoma won this game last season. That was a really good game. Dylan Gabriel basically put this team on his back. He won this game by himself at the end of the game. He was throwing. He was running for touchdowns. He was scrambling everywhere. It's not necessarily going to be Jackson Arnold's game. He can move, but he's not a scrambling quarterback. But they're going to have an air raid type of offense. They're going to have the playmakers there at wide receiver. Do not underestimate Texas. Texas is bringing in a top 15 defense from last year, a top 20 offense. Their roster is a top five in all of college football right now. They're going to have Quinn Ewers. They're going to be built at running back, wide receiver, tight end. D-line is losing some pieces to the draft, but they're retooling. Oklahoma, really good roster. Texas has the better roster as of right now, but that obviously didn't help them last year because this is a rivalry game. Both these teams are out for blood. Anything can happen this game. It is in Texas. I'm going to have the Texas Longhorns getting some revenge from last season, winning this game, but a really close one. Probably like a 34-28, to but Oklahoma gets their first loss of the season. But the season's still young. Everything is still in front of them right now. The next game that we're looking at Saturday, 
October 19th, the South Carolina Gamecocks. It's always a team that sometimes can be pretty competitive. Uh, they have Beamer there as the head coach. They are losing their quarterback. They're losing some of the skilled position players. But this team wasn't very good last season. They had a pathetic defense. They had a bad offense. They really had nothing working for them, in, and they're in the SEC. So it's going to be hard to rebuild when you're already in the bottom tier of the SEC. This game's back in Norman, Oklahoma. Norman's ready for some revenge. They just lost to Texas. So the next victim they play, they're going to curb stomp them. They're going to be out for blood. They're going to be run the score up. I have Oklahoma winning this game and winning it pretty handedly, probably like a 44 to 21 game. And Oklahoma's now 6 and 1. And that brings us to our next game, Saturday, October 26th at Old Miss Rebels. Lane Kiffin's team. A lot of national championship aspirations this season. Obviously, with the playoffs moving to 12 teams, all the Ole Miss has to do is win 10 games, and they're probably getting in the playoffs. They owned the transfer portal this offseason. They brought in all kind of players. They stacked their defense. They stacked their offense at the wide receiver position. They're bringing back all of their starters, except for Quinchin Junkins, who did transfer to Ohio State. They still have the quarterback. They lit it up last season on offense, but their defense had some question marks. They retooled the defense. This is in Old Miss. This is going to be a tough game. Lane Kiffin sees the playoffs in his sights. I have Old Miss beating Oklahoma, knocking Oklahoma to 6-2, and two, but still so far a really good rookie season in the SEC with a first-year starter. But Oklahoma is now 6-2. and two. That brings us to our next game Saturday, November 2nd, the Maine Black Bears. Obviously, this game is in Oklahoma. This game is not going to be close. It's going to be a blowout. Again, coming off of a loss, Oklahoma is going to be looking to beat the living crap out of the next team they play. They're going to blow Maine out. It's probably going to be like a 60-7 type game. And they're now 7-2. and two. The next game that we're looking at is another tough one. Lots of tough matchups this season at Missouri Tigers. Missouri last season, what, they went 11-2 and two or something like that? They had a really strong season, beat Ohio State in the bowl game. This is a tough team. Everybody's coming back. They still have their quarterback, Cook. They still have the coaching staff. This team had a top 25 offense, top 25 defense last season. Really well-rounded team. And they're going to have their sights on the SEC championship this game. They're going to be out for blood. Oklahoma... Obviously, they played Missouri before. Missouri used to be in the Big 12. They're no stranger to them. Brent Venables knows all about Missouri. But this is a really tough team to play. It's at Missouri. Can Oklahoma beat them? Definitely. I would not be surprised if they won because I don't think there's a talent gap there in any way. But we do have experienced starters at Missouri. They've been in the big games. They've won the big games before. Oklahoma's working there because they have a lot of first-year starters. And I have... Oklahoma getting their third loss of the season, dropping to 7-3, losing to Missouri. You know, this game is not going to be a blowout, but I could see it being like a 32-24-25 type game. So pretty close to a one-possession loss. Then Oklahoma has a bye week to kind of get their mind right, get, get things back on track, and then they get hit with another one. Saturday, November 23rd, Alabama Crimson Tide coming to Oklahoma. Think of this. We have an Alabama team traveling to Oklahoma. Crazy the matchups that we're getting now with all these teams jumping conferences. Alabama, Oklahoma, they've played a lot the last eight years because they've met in in the playoffs. So we've had some matchups, but that was Lincoln Riley versus Nick Saban. That's gone. Lincoln Riley's now at USC. Nick Saban retired. So we have the new coaches. We have Venables versus Kalen DeBoer. So definitely an interesting matchup. Doesn't have the same ring to it as before, but Oklahoma just a tough schedule. Brutal back-to-back physical tough games that they're going to have to play. Alabama, even with them rebuilding with a new coach, they still have playoff aspirations. If they get to 10 wins, if they finish the season 10-2, and two, they're probably getting in the playoffs due to their brand because our top 12 teams are going to get in. This is going to be a tough game. I, you know, am 60-40 Bama winning. So I don't think Oklahoma is going to get pushed around the field, but Jalen Milrow, you know, as long as he's still the starter there, doesn't transfer once spring football's over. I have to give the edge to Alabama. Kalen DeBoer, really good coach. He's been a head coach a lot longer than Venables. He has more of a system in place at this team because this is a top three roster in all of football. A better roster than Oklahoma's. That's not a knock on Oklahoma. It's just Nick Saban left this team stacked at every single position. Kalen DeBoer can basically sleepwalk 
to 10 wins. I have Alabama getting the win here. This win's probably going to be like a 34-27 game, 34-30. Close game. Whoever has the ball, I'll... I think Alabama's going to have, you know, a three or four point lead up to the end and then get a field goal to extend the lead. So they're going to have the game, the whole game. Oklahoma will kind of make a close end of the third quarter, fourth quarter, but Alabama will pull away at the end. Oklahoma drops to seven and four. Then that we have the final game of the regular season, Saturday, November 30th at LSU. This is Baton Rouge. It's going to be a tough place to play. Probably going to be a night game. LSU. Brian Kelly, great coach, lost a lot from last season. They had the number one offense last year, scoring 45.4 points per game. You had um, neighbors there at wide receiver. You had Daniels at quarterback. He won the Heisman. This was an offense that was the best in the country, lighting things up. Those guys are all gone. So those stats don't necessarily carry over into the 2024 season. And LSU's defense was a harsh joke last season. They were like 120th out of 134 teams. They were just completely pathetic. Everybody could score. Every game was a shootout. That's why Daniels had such great stats, because he had to play four quarters and basically have shootouts every single week. So LSU lost their great offensive players. I have no doubt they'll be able to retool. This is a top 10 roster. But you lose a Heisman quarterback. So there's obviously going to be a step back, because not every guy is going to be a Heisman-level quarterback. You lost neighbors, who's going to be a top 10 pick at wide receiver. Your defense was a joke, but they're going to be better. But you're not going to go from 120 up to a top 20 offense. That's just not going to happen that way. It's going to take some time. They'll probably move to a 70th a seventieth defense, 60th defense, which is a big improvement. But I'd say year two or three under the D coordinator with the D-line coach they have, they're going to be a lot better. They're just not there this season. This is anyone's game. I'm going to go with the upset. I'm going to go with Oklahoma getting the eight wins, beating LSU, finishing the regular season eight and four. But they could easily lose this game and finish the regular season seven and five. That's not an indictment on Venables. It's just a really tough schedule with a first-year quarterback in the SEC. Oklahoma's going to be just fine. It's their first season in a new conference with a new quarterback. So they just have to get used to things, and it's going to be a lot more physical than it was in the Big 12. But I have Oklahoma getting the win here. Finishing the regular season 8-4. and four. That's a strong opening season coming into the SEC. Props to Brent Venables there and this coaching staff. So that's my way too early prediction breakdown for the Oklahoma Sooners. Hit that like button and subscribe. If you have any comments, drop them below and I'll make sure to respond. Thanks.